Hello everyone, this is the historiographer. When you think of the use of chemical or biological weapons in war, you will probably have these images that immediately spring to mind. The German use of chlorine gas in the horrific trench warfare conditions of World War I, or more potently, Hitler's use of gas chambers to liquidate what he saw as enemies of the Reich. However, a lesser known similar occurrence happened at the hands of an entirely different beast thousands of miles away from Europe, where hundreds of thousands of mostly Chinese civilians lost their lives in uncompromising biological and chemical warfare as well as lethal human experimentation. Meet Japan's infamous Unit 731. While Japan signed the Geneva Convention in 1925, which prohibited biological and chemical warfare, other Japanese imperialists, including the unit's founder, Dr. Shiroishi, saw the ban as an opportunity. In order to convince the Imperial Japanese Army, the military physician Ishii, who would become the mastermind behind Unit 731, built the case that bacteria and gas were a much less expensive war weapon. By 1930, the army was more open to Ishii's ideas of developing biological weapons. And after Japan's notorious conquest of Manchuria in 1931, Ishii was given the green light to start working on his project. By 1932, Dr. Ishii chose the city of Harbin in Japanese-occupied Manchuria as the site of Unit 731's first biological and chemical weapons facility, which would later be moved once more to the suburb of Pink Fang in 1936. Japan's medical institutions collaborated with Unit 731, hence violating all physician codes by supplying Dr. Ishii with top Japanese scientists and physicians. As a result, Unit 731 received the nearly unlimited supply of funds from the Japanese government, as evidenced by Emperor Hirohito's decree in 1936. In the facility, countless experiments were undertook. Vivisection, which is the literal dissection of humans, was often performed without anesthesia. As for biological weapons, Unit 731 and its affiliated units worked hand in hand to develop effective means of biological terror. For example, plague infected fleas bred in Japanese biolabs were spread by airplanes over Chinese cities, such as the cities of Hunan province in 1940 and 1941, killing tens of thousands with bubonic plague epidemics. In other tests, victims were deprived of food and water to determine the length of time until death. They were also electrocuted, placed into centrifuges, and spun until death subjected to lethal doses of x-rays and various chemical weapons inside gas chambers, injected with seawater, and burned or buried alive. Note that these are but mere examples of the horrific atrocities committed inside the walls of Unit 731's headquarters, and further reading can be found in this video's description. Overall, according to the American historian Sheldon Harris in his book Factories of Death, over 200,000 people died as a result of Unit 731's actions, most of whom were Chinese, while the remainder consisted of the mentally ill, communist sympathizers, and prisoners of war including Soviet and Allied POWs. While some members of Unit 731 were captured and tried by the Soviets after the Soviet invasion of Manchuria and the seizure of Unit 731's complex in 1945, others were much luckier. Indeed, after Japan's surrender in August of 1945, American microbiologist Murray Sanders was charged with investigating Japanese biological warfare activities. He was exposed to a tsunami of information concerning the unit and its crimes by the Japanese after he threatened them with bringing the Soviets into the picture. Sanders reported his findings to the American general Douglas MacArthur, responsible for rebuilding Japan during the Allied occupation. MacArthur, however, struck a deal with the remaining members of Unit 731, secretly granting them immunity, including their infamous leader, Lieutenant General Shiroishi, in exchange for solely providing America with their invaluable research on biological warfare and data. In the 90s, the Japanese government released the names of the perpetrators, but did not apologize. Today, living members live in shame for their war crimes, as evident by this interview with Hideo Shimizu, a Japanese ex-Unit 731 member, which said this about about his involvement in the unit's war crimes. I want to apologize to the Chinese people. I would like to thank the Chinese people from the bottom of my heart. We have committed atrocious war crimes against the Chinese, and I think that the Japanese people should repent for their war crimes and apologize to China. Ultimately, Japan consistently refuses to officially apologize to China for their war crimes. 
as it would bring unnecessary attention on both the Japanese ruling family's involvement as well as America's Machiavellian pardon. This video therefore hopes to shed light on humanity's previous crimes of war in an effort to halt new ones by the learned decision makers. Consider subscribing to aid us in this noble mission of spreading history to the masses. This has been the historiographer and for now have a good one.